Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Before we get started, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel, Space Tourism. So make sure to watch the full video. The first space tourist in history, Dennis T. Doe 82, has signed up with Elon Musk's SpaceX for a Starship trip around the moon. The world's first space traveler wants to return, but this time he's booked a trip on Elon Musk's Starship to orbit the moon. Dennis T. Doe 82 has the opportunity to experience the excitement of his voyage to the International Space Station ISS, now that he is retired and has more free time. On Russia's Soyuz TM-32 flight in 2001, the engineer turned financial analyst spent nearly eight days on board the International Space Station ISS, becoming the first private person to pay for a trip to space. On the SpaceX voyage, he will travel for a week and come within 200 miles of the moon without actually touching down there along with his wife Akiko and 10 other passengers, ready to pay a significant sum of money for the voyage, he will have company. Tito won't disclose the cost of his orbit around the moon. His trip to the ISS cost $20 million, 20.5 million euros. Musk's plan to launch Starship, which will carry people and goods to the moon and Mars, has not been granted a launch date by SpaceX. But according to the CEO of Tesla and richest man in the world, he hopes to launch the rocket into space for the first time as soon as next month. A few businesses such as SpaceX and Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic are working to make space travel a reality, while Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin is already providing suborbital thrill flights around 100 kilometers above the planet. Who would like to become the next moon billionaire? Tito is actually the second wealthy person to reserve a starship for a trip around the moon. Yusa Kumizawa, a Japanese fashion mogul, declared in 2018 that he had purchased a whole flight in order to bring along eight or so people, mainly artists. Twenty years apart, the two men took separate flights on Russian rockets from Kazakhstan to the space station. Tito launched space tourism in 2001, becoming the first person to travel to space on his own dime and upsetting NASA in the process. A tourist loitering about while the station was being constructed was not something the U.S. space agency wanted. However, the Russian space agency needed the money and, with the aid of the American company Space Adventures, flew a number of wealthy passengers to the station throughout the 2000s, most recently, Mizawa a year ago. The largest rocket ever Tito and his wife are aware that Starship, a bright, bullet-shaped monster that hasn't even tried to reach space, still needs to undergo extensive testing and development. According to Tito, we have to maintain good health for as many years as it will take SpaceX to finish this vehicle. If it weren't for this quest, I may be rocking back and forth in my chair without getting any useful exercise. From the southernmost point of Texas, close to the Mexican border, Starship has not yet taken off atop a super heavy booster. The largest and most potent rocket ever created, it has a height of 120 meters and 7.7 .7 million of liftoff thrust. The first lunar touchdown since Apollo will take place in about 2025, and NASA has already contracted with a Starship to transport its men there. According to Tito, the couple's agreement with SpaceX, which was finalized in August 2021 and made public on Wednesday, October 12, contains an option for a trip within five years. Cape Flaws Canaveral As NASA joins Russia in hosting visitors at the most expensive tourist resort in the world, SpaceX flew three wealthy businessmen and their astronaut escort to the International Space Station on Friday for a stay of more than a week. After two years of transporting NASA astronauts there, SpaceX is making its first private charter voyage to the orbiting lab. Four astronauts will assist researchers in understanding how space travel affects the human body. The space station is reached on Saturday. Businessmen who manage investments, real estate, and other industries will include Americans, Canadians, and Israelis. For the rocket journey, lodging, and all meals, they are each paying $55 million. At the space station and the earlier Mars station, Russia has always welcomed visitors. A Japanese fashion tycoon and his assistant arrived shortly after a Russian film crew did just last fall. After years of resisting visits to the space station, NASA is now finally joining in. Former NASA astronaut and chaperone Michael Lopes Allegria remarked after entering orbit, it was a hell of a ride, and we're looking forward to the next 10 days. The three cosmonauts on board must provide the tourists access to the Russian section of the space station. All other areas of the space station are included in their tickets. Up there, there also reside three Americans and a German. While on board the space station, Lopes Allegria intends to refrain from discussing politics and the conflict in Ukraine. 
I really don't believe it will be awkward. I mean, perhaps a little bit, he remarked. He believes that this spirit of collaboration will shine through. The three paying clients of the for-profit Axiom Space Enterprise were Israeli Eitenstib, a former fighter pilot and founding partner of Vital Capital, Larry Connor of Dayton, Ohio, who controls the Connor Group, and Mark Pathy, founder and CEO of Montreal's Maverick Corp. Their excitement was evident before to the launch because Stid performed a small dance as soon as he came at the rocket at the Kennedy Space Center. According to Lopez Alegria, who spent seven months in the space station 15 years ago, SpaceX and NASA were open with them about the risks of spaceflight. Before the journey, Lopez Alegria told the Associated Press, I don't think there's any haze on what the dangers are or what the bad days could look like. They don't like to be termed space tourists because each visitor has a full schedule of experiments to complete during their 9 to 10 days there. The co-founder and president of Axum, Michael Suffredini, a former NASA program manager for the space station stated, they're not there to paste their nose on the window. The three business people are the most recent to benefit from the space opening up to individuals with significant pockets. While Virgin Galactic anticipates beginning passenger flights on its rocket ship later this year, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin rocket business is currently offering 10-minute trips to the edge of space. After taking a billionaire and his companions on a three-day orbital journey last year, Friday's voyage marks Elon Musk's SpaceX's second private charter. The second private voyage to the space station by Axiom is planned for the following year. More client journeys will follow, starting in 2024 when Axiom begins to add its own rooms to the orbiting complex. One of the commercial outposts meant to replace the space station once it is dismantled and NASA ships to the moon is the company's proposal to remove its compartments after around five years to build a self-sustaining station. The NASA moon rocket, which is getting ready for a summer test flight, will be at a nearby launch pad on Friday. The four guests are trying pala and other Spanish dishes made by celebrity chef Dosi Andres as a gift for their seven station hosts. The freeze-dried food provided by NASA will have to suffice for the remainder of their stay on the station. The automated SpaceX spacecraft and its four occupants are scheduled to land in Florida on April 19 for their return. Space, a sample NASA obtained from the moon 50 years ago, that was vacuum-sealed is just now being opened by NASA. By borrowing items from the Neil Armstrong Air and Space Museum in Wapakoneta, including a fabric swatch from the Wright Brothers' 1903 Kitty Hawk flight and gold foil, from the Apollo 11 command module, Connor is preserving Ohio's air and space heritage. Stig will carry on a stormy experiment started by Ilan Rema, the first Israeli to launch to space, who passed away aboard Shuttle Columbia in 2003. Rahman was the only Israeli to do so. Their fighter pilot squadron was the same. Rahman's son, a musician, has written a song, while Rahman's daughter painted a picture of pages falling from the sky. Stib is carrying reproductions of the retrieved pages from Raymond's space diary. Being a part of this special squad has proved to me that no dream is out of reach, he stated. So, that's it for today. We hope you enjoyed the video. Use the comments section below to tell us your thoughts about the video. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of all the latest videos.